Well, hello friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here. and Welcome down to the Whiskey Nook. We're a couple of days ahead of Robbie Burns Day and so I'm going to keep shooting scotch. Maybe I'll even shoot two today and, and do some scotch samples tomorrow and make it all scotch just so that you've got some thoughts uh, for how you might be enjoying uh, Robbie Burns Day on this coming Monday. So today we're going to look at Tamdu. I have not talked about Tamdu on the channel. In fact, I haven't had any Tamdu except for this 10 year old. So kind of interesting that I will talk about a a space side scotch, a very unique bottle. What we know is what we taste. If you have any shared scotch, maybe pour something and we'll share a dram. This will be Tamdu 10 year old. Three, four. Hey, thanks for, for staying with me. Uh, as I said before the break, uh, lots of scotch this weekend uh, for me. I shouldn't say it quite like that, but I mean, I'm really thinking about scotch as we think of uh, the celebrations that'll be going on, I imagine, in Scotland to celebrate the poet, Robbie Burns. Uh, this Tam Dew, interesting. You know, I have to say, I really like that bottle. I think it just looks like a classic bottle, and yet it's not, you know, blocky in any way that I can't, you know, pick it up and pour it, so... That's kind of cool. Um, Tamdu is not well known, I believe, uh, for most of its history. I mean, it started again in the end of the 1800s. Uh, and then for, for certainly a lot of its run, I, I, I've read that it went into a lot of blends. I think Famous Grouse was probably the largest uh, one. But then it, uh, you know, it shut down in 2010. And, and then it went to uh, Ian McClough. I think the Eddington Group owned it at that point. And, uh, and then it went to Ian McLeod Distillers, which also owned Glen Goyne. And they started production back up in 2012, 2013. I couldn't quite find the thing. So from 2010 to 2012 or 2010 to 2013, they weren't making any scotch. One thing that's interesting with Tam Du that I've been able to, you know, source out and look at is that uh, from the beginning, they have always sought to age their scotch in ex-sherry. So this, uh, on the bottle it just says ex-sherry, uh, but you go to the site and it says Oloroso Sherry. Um, but all of the time this uh, scotch has been in cask, has been only in ex-sherry. So it's not sherry finish. This is full ex-sherry matured scotch. Carries an age stamp of 10 and in here in North America, we get the 43%. I heard... 40% was what was kind of released in uh, UK area. Um, now, it used to be their entrance. Now, a 12-year-old is their entrance. Fair. Uh, but I managed to get this on a decent deal. It's usually a little overpriced in our area. So I'm happy with the price. Happy that it's natural color. Happy that it's 43. Doesn't say. So I imagine it's chill filtered. Um, but it's got a lot of things going for it. Let's see what the scotch itself tastes. Tastes like, uh, yeah, what else do I know about Tamdu? No, I think X-Sherry, like all X-Sherry uh, is probably the biggest thing to be thinking about. So uh, I know this camera, this lighting is not perfect, so you can't see. It's definitely darker colored, and for only a 10-year-old to be natural, you know it's, it's well, you likely know that it's got some Sherry influence, um, but it's not as dark as some, so interesting. Let's see what we know is in taste. You know, it's a nice X sherry light space side scotch. In this case, it's got an interplay between the hints at richer, darker fruits, but it doesn't ignore a little bit of basket of light fruit going on there. So, nice fruit forward, a hints at spicing. It almost smells creamy. I don't know how to explain smelling creamy. I suppose there's no alcohol that puts it off. The nose rolls through a couple of dimensions from, from some, some lighter fruit into, okay, I think there's going to be some darker fruits going on here. Some, you know, some fig, raisin, or thick raisin, sultana type. Mmm. Wow. Ah. Like the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Slancha. That's an expressive palette. Up front, actually got kind of a, 
a sweeter, a sugar mixed in with some fruits. So it really felt like a sweeter raisin, but didn't take long. And I got some, some nice baking spices, not sharp, but a little bit of cinnamon, some definite, you know, a darker, less sweet spices came through, some nutmegs. And it's got uh, what I like, what I suggest is some decent cherry cask influence. Uh, now, of course, the fruit is that, but the cask here, I was going with the wood that's coming, has that older, slightly musty, but not moldy wood, not too sulfuric. It's got that. I find that in cherry cask, it just feels like older wood. I need another sip. Mm. Okay, that took two sips to express. Now we're firmly in a hint of espresso, definite chocolate, leathered fruit, um, leathered fruit, dried fruit, what I mean by that, you know, like, um, yeah, some dried fruit. So even there, I got a slight expression of apple, which wouldn't be the first fruit I'd mention, but it would be like I'm eating a dried apple ring, you know, like, so you're, you've got that dried apricot, dried even apple, and then you go, oh, okay, no, it's a little dark, more red. So then you think of some dried red fruit or something. Um, and, and the finish is decent, like decent. It, it's going on. You know, this is a 10 year old scotch. And as I said, in my neck of the woods, it's overpriced, but, uh, I got it for great, great price. And at, at, at kind of the price where, where most entrance 12 year olds, you know, the Glenn Flitty, Glenn Livet type play in, and that made it a buy as soon as I saw it. Natural color, 43%, full sherry, not just sherry finished. This is a decent bottle. <laughs> you can tell by my demeanor. I'm very happy that I have it. Uh, and, um, you know, like I'm obviously past the neck pour. I've only had it a few days, though. Um, it's tough for me to put a star because it's already better than when I first opened it. I know everybody on YouTube, and myself, I'm guilty of that says it all the time. But really, I have to say... It, it has gotten, even in only three days, a little bit better than the first time. The first time I went out, I'm like, oh, I wanted more sherry. Now it's got a nice balance of sherry in there. Good nose. I think probably the, the critique would be there's a little bit of bitterness and a little bit of astringency. Perhaps it's youth or perhaps, I don't know what, but there's a little bit of bite. But uh, I'm happy to give this three and three quarter stars, just under four, possibly four. Like, this is a really good... Entrance scotch. I don't want to bet the farm on it, but uh, I really liked it. I'm going to uh, shoot it against uh, a great uh, classic natural colored 43% only sherry um, scotch, and that's, you know, Glendronic 12. This continues to be, uh, to me, the, the benchmark um, of full sherry matured scotch. But uh, as I've said earlier, in my Canadian market, uh, harder to get. Um, in this case, I actually paid, uh, $10 more for this bottle than that. I wish I would have had the Glendronic 10 still to try it, but here's some comparison thoughts. Okay. So the nose is a little more resinous, if I may. Yeah, this is uh, a little, uh, sweeter, a little more sugar, but a little lighter. Yeah. A little darker on the Glenronic. See about the palette. Okay. Quick thoughts on the palette. Still got that good dark fruit, but here I have more spicing. It definitely perks in my mouth, says hello, and this bottle's been open a little while, so you can tell that there's still some, some lively cask wood, something going on here that perks. But I wasn't as getting as much on the Tamdu. Nice. Even got a little more chocolate on the nose. Huh. Okay. Comparison. Um, you know, not as not as not as dark. And they're both natural color, and this is also darker in color. But actually, um, a little less spicing, which which when I drank this, I was kind of criticizing because I, I like a little bit of a little bit of spice. 
Here, it almost rolled over my tongue a little bit more and it, it, um, it rolled into some, some nut, chocolate. Yeah, it, some of those flavors that I wasn't getting on the Glendronic. <laughs> I really love Glendronic 12. Like this is a four star if I haven't given it that. It has to be a four star for me, really it does. Um, but today, this Tamdu is holding its own. It really is. And I know, Glendronic is a beast, but uh, I, I, could, I could move that up into that neighborhood. It's different. But they're both X-Sherry, and I'm, uh, lately I've been a bit of an X-Sherry kick, and I, I, uh, I'm really enjoying that Tamdu. No, I don't like Glendronic. <laughs> I hate to say which one's better. Probably I just barely lean the Glendronic right now. But uh, very thankful that I got that. Hey, thanks my, uh, for staying. Those are my, my a little bit muddled comparison thoughts. Oh, I wanted to put something out to the whiskey community. I kept it back because I don't know what I'm saying. You know, a few years ago, it was all the rage to, to try to find a Glendronic that because of the six-year gap period where they weren't producing, you'd be getting older liquid, right? Like you'd be getting a bottle that said 12, but you could go back and you'd go, okay, they weren't producing whiskey at this time 12 years ago so they couldn't legally give me you know six-year-old whiskey or whatever so they have to give me you know 13 14 15 and it got older all the time and you could find on there there's a printed bottle date on here uh, and it was all the rage and i have this question for the whiskey community so tamdu as i understand it from 2010 to 2012 or 13 so for sure two possibly three, but for sure two years was not producing. And it's 2021. So I'd be right in that place. Like, like, like depending on what I'm wondering about is, is there any of that interplay? Because there's two years where they weren't producing. And if they sold all their stocks, I guess if they didn't sell their stocks, that's probably how they got around it. Huh? Yeah, that's probably it. Because no one in the community has said that. But I just suddenly wondered, oh, is this maybe an 11 year old? Could be, because this can't be from the new, like 2012 or 2013 production run. This has to be from um, from before. Yeah, so wouldn't that make it? I'm confused. Someone in the community, take a look at that. Someone who knows and tell me. If this is just 10, you know what? Natural color, 43% full X Sherry 10 year old. This is decent scotch. Thanks for joining me here. You guys have a great weekend.